Okay, so we're moving on where we're going to have some polynomials. And I'm going to start off with a binomial, and we're still looking for GCFs. So the actual specific objective today is factoring polynomials to find their, their GCF. And basically, we're going to do the opposite of distributive property. So when they're finished, they will look like something that needs to be distributed. And I think it'll make sense to you when I show you the first one. So when I talked about 8-1, like when we were looking at these problems from yesterday, in the book, it showed like 6x squared and 5x squared. And I told you guys, just write them down on top of each other and start listing their factors. Kind of like I did here in number 14, right? In these problems, I actually want you to write the problem down the way it is in the book. So the first example we're going to do is 4x squared minus 3x. You're going to come back and show what that's equal to when it's been factored. And by factoring it, we're talking about pulling out what they both have in common that could be distributed back in to return it to this form. So we're showing two different forms of it. One is where it's full on been distributed, everything's multiplied out. The second, we're going to end up usually with parentheses and something in front that both of these have in common. What's going to go in front here is the GCF. What's going to be put in here is like the leftovers, what didn't get used from the GCF. So let's take a look at what that looks like. To find it, we're going to do the work similar to what you guys were doing yesterday. We're going to take the two terms from this and write them down here. And we're going to pull them into their pieces and find what they have in common. So 4x squared would be written as 1 times 2 times 2 times x times x. Negative 3x would be 1 times negative 1 times 3 times x. They don't have very much in common with these two, do they? No. All we see in common is a single x and the common invisible one, which we can leave invisible. So we're going to take this GCF and we're going to come up and put it in this place. And into the parentheses, we're going to put what's left from the first term. What's left is 2 times 2 times x. So we get 4x. And what's left for the second term? Negative 3. It's, we've got the negative 1 times the 3. And it's really important that you're paying attention to your negatives here. Because if I have a positive term and a negative term, that should still be what's in the parentheses here. You guys can check this by just simply doing distributive property and see if you get it back to this. This one's pretty simple, so we can just visualize, yeah, that works, and we pulled everything out. The ones that are more complex, if you're checking them, especially on an assessment, you might want to set up the matrix and do what we were doing at the end of Chapter 7, right? This is building on to what we've done before. Let's try one that is a little bit more complex. Let's try 10 y to the third plus 20y squared minus 5y equals. And we're going to leave that space open for the equals. We're going to come back, and I'm just going to do this lightly because normally you wouldn't actually put a line under this. But we're going to find what the GCF is and put it here. And then we're going to have a parentheses that's going to have three terms in it. Underneath, let's break down each of these terms and see what its parts are. Ten y to the third would break down to one times two times five, and how many y's? Three. Three y's. What would twenty break down to? Really similar to the first one, but we get an extra two, and only two y's. And then we have a negative 5y at the end here. So it also gets its positive one, but it gets also a 
negative 1, a 5, and a y. They all have a y in common, don't they? And they all have a 5 in common. And they have a positive 1 in common. So what's being factored out for the GCF five is a positive 5y. Then we're going to come back and look at what's left here. For our first term, we have 2 and y squared. And just think in your head as you're going. If I distributed this back, 5y times 2y squared, am I going to come back to this term? Yes. And if you are, then you're pretty comfortable you've done it right. What's in our second term? 4y. Four. Four y. Four y, and it's positive. How do I know that? There's no negative 1 hanging out left over, right? This is where it's tricky. What's left here? And I'll tell you, the people who don't take my advice and write the ones as part of their factoring are the ones who mess this up. Because they, they see that this is factored out and they think that there's nothing left. And I've seen wrong answers that look like this. Do you see what they've done? Yeah. By taking what got factored from the third term, they've eliminated the third term. So if I go and factor this back by distributing, I'm not going to have my third term there, am I? Because no. you're only distributing to two places. If there's three terms here, there should still be three terms left here. To guarantee that is why I'm really suggesting you factor both of the positive or negative ones that they have. The ones matter. Making them visible really does matter. There will get to a point where you guys can do this pretty comfortably and still know, but when you're starting it, I really, really suggest you make those ones and the negative ones especially invisible. Okay? All right. Who feels like they can practice this? Okay. I think you guys can too. Um, let's try one more together, and then I'll give you guys some practice to work on. So we're going to start with a binomial that has two negative terms. Again, I feel yesterday like I kind of cheated you on not having a negative example in our work. We're going to end up with a greatest common factor factored out and parentheses with two terms in it. The difference is here, these are both what kind of terms? Negative. They're both negative. So when we bring this down here, we're going to have negative 12x and negative 8x squared. A little tricky because negative. this is usually the leading term because it's got the x squared and they put it in the back. Just keep it in the order that the book has it in. <coughs> Again, commutative property, they could go in either place. We just have what's kind of like a proper sentence versus an improper sentence, but the meaning is still there, right? What do we have with this? both of these? Negative, negative one. 1 times positive 1, because everything has a positive 1. The negatives have the additional negative 1. And then how am I going to factor down 12? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking in my head it's 3 times 4 is 4 prime. No. 4 can be broken into 2 times 2, times 3, and there's a single x there. The next one could also be negative 1 and positive 1. And then we have 3 twos. Because 8 is 2 to the third power, right? And how many x's? 2. Okay, trying to make this really visible on camera. I'm going to use my pen. This shows that my common factor, my greatest common factor, is going to be negative because I circled a negative one for both. I have a two for both, and another two, and an x. Everything I circle is going to become our greatest common factor. So two times two 
is 4, and then I've got my negative, so I get negative 4x. What's left in the first term? Three. And what's left in my second term? Three. They're both positive now. Whoa. In this part, the, they were both negative, but we factored out the negative. So when we replace them in here, they both end up positive. But what's going to happen if I go and use the claw and distribute back? You get the same thing. They're go both going to go back to being negative, right? So, questions before I give you some practice work? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so this practice work can be found on page 555. Can we do it on the same paper? Um, you, I did here, can we do it on the same paper? You can. My guess is you're going to have some more work today and it might be stapling the paper together. Um, we're starting with number one and going to ten. And because I really want you guys solid in this before we move on, I'm going to have you also do 27 to 35. Oh. That is all you have from me from over the break, so no whining. Oh, over the, oh. oh. Right? No class tomorrow. We yeah. come back together on the Monday after the break. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless love. And a little bit of um, Mrs. Aldous history. This is one of my lucky numbers. It was my first Girl Scout troop number when I was a brownie in second grade. 